Palette in birds In general, the skull in various birds does not show much variation. Amongst some of the universal skull characters of birds are an early ankylosis of bones except in retitate, rounded and spacious cranium, single small rounded occipital condyle formed by basiocipal, the upper beak composed mainly by the two premaxillae united into a large triradiate bone, the slender maxillo-ugal arch, the large parasphenoidal rostrum, the freely articulated quadrant and the reptilian postfrontals. Orbits are large, separated by a thin interorbital septum formed by the mesethmoid which is continued anteriorly with cartilaginous internasal septum. Importance of palate in classification There are, however, marked differences in the structure of the palatal region of skull and birds which provides an important character for their classification. The living birds are classified in two suborders Paleognathy and Neognathy. In the Paleognathy or Retite are included all the flightless birds. They have a Dromiognathus type of palate and skull in which the large vomer is extended posteriorly, so that the two palatins do not meet with one another and with the rostrum. On the other hand, in Neognath or Carinati are included all the modem flying birds. They have a Neognathus type of palate with three subtypes, Schizognathus, Desmognathus and Egythognathus, in which the vomer is small or absent, so that the palatins meet the rostrum. Kinds of palate in birds Huxley in 1877, pointed out the following four types of palate in birds based on the relations of vomer, palatins, pterygoids and maxillopalatine processes. Paleognathus or Dromiognathus palate This type of palate is characteristic of Ertite, such as the ostrich, Rhea, Kiwi and Tinamus, etc. I. Vomer is large and broad behind connected with the palatins. 2. Palatins do not articulate with the parasphenoidal rostrum, because the vomer intervenes between the two. 3. Maxillopalatine processes are small and do not unite with one another or with the vomer. 4. Basiptrigoid processes of basis phrenoid are well developed and they articulate with the hinder part of the pterygoids. V. Pterygoids are immovably fixed to vomer and are reptilian in form. This type of palate is primitive and occurs in the paleognathy. Types of skull palate in birds Schizognathus palate This type of palate is common in a variety of birds, such as pigeons, fowls, gulls, plovers, cranes, woodpeckers, trogons, etc. I. Vomer is small and pointed in front, or absent. 2. Palatins and pterygoids articulate with the parasphenoidal rostrum at the point where they join one another. 3. Maxillopalatine processes do not unite with one another or with the vomer. 4. Basiptrigoid processes may be absent or small and arising at the base of the rostrum. V. Pterygoids are movably articulated. Desmognathus palate this type of palate is common in most of the wading and swimming birds such as storks, herons, ducks and geese, besides parrots, birds of prey, cuckoos, etc. I. Vomer is often abortive or so small that it disappears in the skeleton. When present, it is always narrow, slender and tapers to a point in front. 2. Palatins and pterygoids articulate with the rostrum. 3. Maxillopalatins are large and united with one another across the middle line often forming a flat, spongy palate ventral to the vomer. 4. Basiptrigoid processes are absent. V. In parrots, a special type of desmognathus type of sliding palate occurs so that the depression of the lower jaw automatically raises the upper jaw. Egythognathus palate This is similar to the schizognathus type of palate. It occurs in passerine birds such as crows, swifts, bulbuls, etc. Vomer is short and broad and truncated instead of being pointed in front. Posteriorly the vomer is deeply cleft embracing the rostrum. <laughs>